So for today's project, me and my trusty assistant over here, he's not very helpful. We're going to place this switch. You can tell by the different layers of paint underneath there, it's fairly old and it's just a matter of time. Believe it or not, switches do go bad in homes. It takes years, decades even, but you turn anything on and off enough times, eventually it will wear out. It's a very simple job. Take the plate off, take the switch out, make sure we turn the power off, of course, disconnect the wires, reconnect the wires to the new switch, put it all back together. There are minimal tools necessary for this job. Only tools you really need would be a screwdriver, flathead, and a Phillips screwdriver. And I always use needle nose pliers to handle the wires because even though the power is off, I don't 100% trust it. Tools that you might want would be a non contact voltage tester. It'll beep to let you know if there's power is still there in case you actually hit the wrong breaker. And I use a cordless driver to help take everything apart faster. So uh, let's get started. First, here are all our tools needle nose pliers, non contact voltage tester, of course, the new switch, screwdriver with multiple bits, or I'm going to use an impact or coilless driver with multiple bits, mainly to take everything apart. Before we get started on this project, first and foremost, we're going to turn the power off. Now, I'm going to recommend doing this job during the day, that way you can at least open up curtains and get daylight. Or, what I really love is my work light. It is rechargeable and cordless, because I used to work on bolts and there's now always a power supply. It gives me the opportunity to light up anything I'm working on without having to plug it in. So let's go find our breakers. Of course, once my assistant gets out of the way. For me, it's in my main hallway closet. Everybody else will be different. Find your main breaker panel. I'm in a one bedroom apartment, so luckily there's only two breakers on here. I'm taking the time to label them. Kitchen and dining room, bedroom and living room. That way I can make sure I get the right breaker. We're gonna cut the breaker off. Give it a click, come back, no more power. So now we're gonna go ahead and proceed with our trial. So first thing we have to do is to get this cover off. Two flathead screws. Use a regular screwdriver or in this case, I'm gonna use my driver again because it's just faster. And there's a switch. Now, as you see with the new switch, the screws are already attached to it and those are actually Phillips. The older switch is flathead because you know, I used Phillips screws a long time ago. And you can see how old this switch is. Now we're going to take this switch off and use our driver, well, using my driver because it's faster for me. the previous person taped over the sides of this switch which is perfectly common it could be done also I kind of recommend it it's not 100% necessary but it's good in case you don't kill the power while working on it so you don't actually hit the metal electrical box the box that holds the switch in is ground because it is the old building newer buildings may not be ground it may be a plastic box and they may run a ground wire from the electrical from the main electrical panel to here but since this is an older building and then run ground wires, they just grounded the whole system by using metal boxes and the conduit, which is metal pipe. So everything in here is one huge ground. All your electrical boxes, outlet boxes, the main breaker box is all grounded. We'll pull this out and we have our wires. Now we'll take this tape off. Move these two wires from this switch. Before we do that, we're gonna make sure that this power is off using our tester. Press the button on the tester, see it light up. Nothing lights up there. If we had power, when I press this button on the tester, it'll light up and then it'll beep. But since I do this, we have no power. We know that for a fact because we turned the breaker off, but this is just another way to make sure we're safe. Now we'll go ahead and undo the wires on the switch. And the 
bear with me here. I had surgery on my right thumb and I'm right handed, so a little difficult right now. But that just shows the ease of this task. I can actually do this with a sore hand still. The other reason I had having the power off, if I had touched these two together with the power being on, it would have irked and shocked me. If not, at least scared the mess out of me. There we go, switch is off. Now, you see how there's a loop in this wire? It means that that's actually the main wire. It's probably coming from the switch down to the outlet on the floor. And instead of making a break inside of here and having a separate wire come off, again, building's old. Who knows how many, when that switch is installed? That person just, when they add that outlet, put a loop there to continue the circuit. Now, on the switches, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which side because it's a switch. So it's going to break it off and on. So as we know, when we put it on, that on is up, off is down. We want to make sure that happens. But as far as which wire goes where, it doesn't make a difference. It's why they're both the same color. It's not labeled neutral or hot. It does not matter. You have a ground screw here, which for this older building is not necessary. Because again, we're grounded there by screwing them to the box. And as you can see, there are no ground wires because older building. Everything is ground. Newer buildings, you may have a ground post back there and a green wire coming off to the screw to here. In that case, connected. Otherwise, it's not necessary. So now we're gonna put the wires on our new switch, tighten this up, and I'll grab my electrical tape and wrap it, which I should have added to the tool list, but I just forgot one little step. Again, I'm gonna use the pliers here just because it's easier for me to do it right now. Get this around this screw. nice and tight on there. I'm going to take this one around this screw. Let's open this loop up so I'm going to make it a little easier for us. Then we'll use our pliers to tighten it down once we get it on there. If I'm making this look more difficult than it really is, it's just because I'm actually like one and a half handed right now. So now we have those on, we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Now, as you can see on the newer switch, where you probably can't see very well, they're actually Phillip head screws, whereas on the older switch, they're flat head. So we'll get a Phillips head bit, and we'll actually use a regular screwdriver to tighten these down. I really don't recommend using the driver or impact, because if you over tighten this and crack the body of the switch, you'll need another switch. The little orange thing on there is just a magnet for when I take screws off. Let me try to lose screws. We're just going to tighten this down. We'll tighten this one down. We'll grab our electrical tape and wrap that up. So now we'll go ahead and take our electrical tape. You want to make sure we cover the screws and the wires there here and that way in case the next person working on it decides to pull it out without cutting the power off they won't get a surprise if they actually didn't touch the side of the box make sure you use electrical tape and not any just plain tape electrical tape has ability to not really melt except at extreme high temperatures that's the advantage. Regular tape will melt quickly and then you'll still end up shorting. You can tighten the ground screw down if you like. It's not necessary. It's a big enough box here where it won't get in the way. If you're going into a slimmer box, then you know, you'll tighten that ground screw down to get it out of your way. These screws here are Phillips, whereas the old school, old ones were flathead. But the thread on the box is universal, so all these screws will always match. We're gonna take our switch work the wires back in there. It should be a little difficult because they're 
solid core copper. Get a little bit stiff. Get the screw started. Take your time, make sure you don't cross thread it. Get our bottom screw. Line that up, get it started. I know the switch looks a little crooked right now, it doesn't matter. Once we start getting the switch in here, it'll straighten itself out. It's just the wires pushing against it. You can use your driver to speed this up but it's not really necessary. You want to get it down just tight where your little ears, as my grandfather used to call them, and the flat against your plaster or drywall, depending upon the material you have. This is the old building, there's plaster. And we got this nice and tight, all on. If you would like, before you put your plate on, you can go back and turn your breaker on and make sure everything works. So we'll turn our switch off and we'll go turn our breaker on. So as usual, my lovely assistant left me. He's probably laying on the couch. His favorite thing to do. Let's see. Yeah, working hard over there, huh, little guy? Not really. So we go back to our breaker box. Remember the breaker we turned off said bedroom, living room. See, it's over in the off position. We'll push it on, we should hear a click. And we'll head back to the bedroom. Bedroom light came back on, so we know we have power. We come over here, we we'll hit the switch. No sparks, oh, it's a good thing. Power came on. As I told you before about the non-contact tester, we touched before, we didn't have any beeping. If I touch now, We have power. Now it doesn't matter if this switch is off or on, I should still get that because there's power coming to the switch. That's why I always say turn that breaker off, you're going to be touching those wires. So we know everything's good, we go ahead and get this squared off nice and level, put our faceplate on, and we're done. So we'll finish tightening this down. Get our ears nice and flat against our surface material, which in this case is plaster. We'll grab our switch cover. We also have to switch the uh, tip on our screwdriver from Phillips to flathead. All switch covers have flathead screws for some reason. Go ahead and get at least one screw started. Always try to aim for the top. difficult because you can't see the screw hole you're going into. You just have to have a feel for it. There we go. Let's get our bottom one in. Now I definitely do not recommend doing this with an impact because if you over tighten this you'll crack this plate and you'll be buying a new plate. Luckily they're not that expensive. And we're all done. So now, switch off, no light. Oh, we'll turn our work light off so you can see better. Nice and dark, switch off, switch on. Everything works. Thanks for, the vid for watching my video. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Again, I'm not a professional, so if you don't feel comfortable doing this, hire one, make sure they're licensed and bonded. Um, that's about all I have, thank you.